Hello. <clears throat> I'm like one minute behind here. Let's see. Get everything set up the way I like it. Happy Monday. Time for another Make It Monday Live. <clears throat> okay, let's see. There we go. I see some people popping on and watching. Hi, Jackie. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. Um, I almost missed our live because I sat down just to take a little rest and I fell asleep on the couch. Oh, my gosh. It was crazy. So all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, ah, I'm so groggy and tired. So I quick hopped in the shower and here I am ready to stamp with you all tonight. Oh, my goodness. I see some new names here. Welcome. <clears throat> Hello, Cindy, Carol, and Lola, and Sue. Sue does not have bowling tonight, so she is watching. Hi, Paula. So happy you all could make it. Um, I am doing some stamping tonight with the Garden Wishes Bundle. You know, I got this thing from the Spring Catalog, and I think it's time for us to think about gardens. Um, it's been really, really nice um, lately. And I actually got to thinking, I wonder if anyone in Wisconsin is putting in their uh, gardens anytime soon. I mean, you gotta be so darn careful because of that frost, but uh, it's just been so nice that I've just been loving the spring weather and getting to crack open my windows. It's been amazing, especially when I sleep and now the spring peepers are coming out and oh my gosh, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. All right. I am seeing so many names here that I haven't seen before. So for those of you who are new to watching me, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. <clears throat> My name is Rose Grunewald. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm your creative coach. I am so, so, so passionate about um, people being creative. I have found some amazing balance in my life being creative. It has been such a wonderful hobby and I absolutely love to share it with other people. And um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm here stamping with you tonight in my stamping studio in New Holstein, Wisconsin. And <clears throat> speaking of sharing, because I love it and I so appreciate all of you being here. So many of you have asked, how can I help support your small business? Well, you can do it by connecting with me right here on the live. Um, if you like, comment and share, you are entered to win some prizes each week, which is super, super fun. Um, but I especially love the shares and I've been on a mission to give away double prizes, double prizes. So the last time that I wanted to give away double prizes, my goal was for 20 shares and we got really, really close, but we didn't get there. And I'm going to challenge you all and bump it up just a little bit. If I get 25 shares, I will give away double prizes next week. So hit that share button so that your friends can see um, the stamping and We'll see if we can reach it. I'm super excited. If you're catching the replay, you can be entered for prizes too. Um, and you just like, comment, and share on the replay. No big deal. As long as you get those in before next week's live, you'll be entered to win the prize. If you are watching this on my YouTube channel, because I post the replays on my YouTube channel, um, just hit the subscribe button because I've got tons of video tutorials and then you have all my videos in one handy place. All right. What do you say? Should we get to doing some prizes? Um, last week, remember, I showed you how to use that pretty gilded leafing. And you know what? One of my cards, the wrong one here. I don't know where it went. Well, it might be a mistake. Let's double check. Here it is. I showed you how to use that pretty gilded leafing um, a simple way. We didn't use any heat and stick powder um, and we didn't 
use liquid glue or anything, we use tear and tape. And you might remember this gem. I played around here with the tear and tape on the flower leaves and kind of gave you an idea. I did that live and totally winged it and it turned out really, really nice. Um, this one has an inside here, but I think that gold really pops on the black. So we made that last week and we also did a fun fold where we just use that gilded leafing as an accent down here and that opens up. I've got one with a white inside. That's the one I'll actually send to you. I'm giving these prizes away for likes and comments. And I have the winner listed on the other one. So the winner of this is Marsha Lynn. That's the name that came up and that I entered into my drawing. Um, Marsha, I don't have your address, but there is a link um, in the description of this video to the prize claim form. You can head there, fill out your information, and I will work on getting this in the mail to you. I'm hoping by tomorrow. <clears throat> Next, prizes for sharing. Okay. I'm giving away the Corner Bouquet stamp set. This is from Celebration, um, and I have some extras on hand. Uh, this one is not, it is mounted already, but it has never been used, so you don't even have to mount it. Um, and this one has four pretty images in it. I'm giving this away for sharing, and the winner of this is Kay Stevens Phipps. So congratulations, Kay, you win my sharing prize. Um, and again, if you would please um, use that prize claim form. I'm finding so many people were forgetting to email me and I don't want you to miss out on your prizes. So use that prize claim form and claim your prize. Okay. <clears throat> I have, let me see, here, I'm going to make this stuff a little bigger because it looks blurry on my screen. So I got, I did away with my um, paper that's sitting here because I kept ripping it. Um, and so let's see here. Okay. So I'm trying that new flag at the top. All right, Garden Wishes. We are stamping with Garden Wishes tonight, and here's our bundle. So it comes with coordinating dies. There are 11 stamp sets in the Garden Wishes bundle. It is in our January to June mini catalog. It's one of our um, super sweets. So you might have noticed that a couple of the sweets I gotta find it here. I should have marked this page. Um, a couple of the suites had different, two different stamp sets in it and coordinated with all sorts of product. Um, and so this is part of the Dandy Garden Suite. My class, I already had a class on the Dragonfly Garden Bundle and I'm finally getting a moment to play around here with Garden Wishes Bundle now. You may know that, or may remember from some of my previous classes or stamping live, that I love to go to the catalog first for inspiration and see what people are doing with the stamp set. And so I did that this time, but I went a different way. <clears throat> Let's get started with our first card. So another thing that I like to do, that's my tip for you tonight, when I first use a stamp set is I will go to the stamp set or I will go to the dies and I pick out a couple images that I really, really love that just grab my eye and I will center a card around those to get my creativity flowing. So for me, those two images were this fun, fun flower here and this starburst dandelion here. So our cards tonight are going to center around those two images. I have got a piece of 
Postal Cabana here. Actually, this might be Bermuda Bay. Let me double check here. Yes, it's Bermuda Bay. Okay, here we go. I stuck this in the wrong compartment. So now I have a piece of Coastal Cabana and we're gonna cut our card base. So I'm cutting my card base, it's just a half a sheet of cardstock. I believe it or not, I get asked that question quite a bit. What size is the card base? Um, <clears throat> and um, I just cut a card piece of cardstock in half. Now we're gonna have a layer here that's gonna be four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna get that cut right away. And we're gonna use our blending brushes tonight. I'm gonna show you a super easy technique that will add a little bit of dimension and pop of color to your project. Hi, Carol, I see people still popping on, Shar and Marsha. Oh, Marsha, you won a prize tonight. Um, so don't forget to claim your prize. Congratulations, you won a stamp set from me. <clears throat> All right, blending brush. And I'm gonna grab my Coastal Cabana ink pad. I gotta find it here. I did not put it back where I usually put it. Here we go. Okay, I actually saw this technique by one of the artisan design team members, Martin Stone. I find a lot of inspiration from him. Um, and I noticed that he has beautiful tones and colors in his cards. And I saw a few of his, he did some tone on tone blending brushes to add some depth and dimension to his card front layers. So I am sponging or blending some Coastal Cabana ink right on this Coastal Cabana layer. Now, you wanna be careful that you're not getting that big blob of ink. So I always start, whenever I'm using these blending brushes, I always like to start outside of the cardstock and then blend the color where I need to so I get that hard line on the outside and not on my project. So I'm starting it here on my scrap on the outside and then lightly bringing it towards the inside of my card. And this is just adding uh, an element of additional color to your card front. And all I'm doing is kind of going around and I'm leaving a kind of a bright circle here. I'm not looking for perfection. Just looking for some fun color. I think I want just a little bit more down here. All right. <clears throat> I have to say that I absolutely love, love, love these blending brushes. And I want to know who's with me. Who is so happy that Stampin' Up! came up with these blending brushes? They blend so smooth. I absolutely love them. All right, there we go. So next, I see some people saying that the picture is a little bit fuzzy. I am noticing it's clear on my camera screen, but it might be a little fuzzy because I have this extra picture. So just bear with me tonight and I will get all of that figured out for next week. <clears throat> okay. Now I am going to grab 
I hope I have these full. I do. Okay. I'm going to grab a spritzer. And this just has water in it. And I'm just going to spritz. Get my other paper out of the way. Just spritz a little bit on my paper just to raise some of the ink color that I just sponged on there. Another technique that you can do, I'm using, oops, let's see, I'm looking for an aqua painter that's full. Another technique you can do after sponging is get some water in your aqua painter and you can spritz it onto your card front layer. And as that dries, it will lift a little bit of the color and leave some fun splotches on it. So um, I did both here to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to splotch up here a little bit so that it's not all in one place. And we're going to let this dry really well while we do the other pieces of our card. So one of my favorite really simple color combinations is Coastal Cabana with Very Vanilla. So I've got my Very Vanilla, just a scrap here. Oops, I don't need my Big Boss just yet. And we are going to cut out a couple of these flowers. So I'm just going to grab, I really, really love this fun. This one's my favorite of the two. And then I'm going to grab the starburst one here. I think these are dandelions. And we're also going to be using a tag for this one. So I'm going to cut that right away while I'm running it through. Um, and the tag I'm going to be using is from uh, Tasteful Labels Dyes. I'm using this one that has a little border embossed in it, like so. And I'm just going to up there. Okay. Let's get our big boss in here. Ooh, got a little ladybug. All right, run this through. Now, I do not want these little bulbs on the end here to rip. So I'm pretty careful when I take that one out. And take this one out, our tag out. And then I'm going to cut one more of these detailed ones. Ooh, Sharon loves the brushes. Uh, let's see who else. Marsha loves the brushes. I absolutely love them. I've been waiting to see my first dandelion. Speaking of dandelions that were die cutting here, I've been waiting to see my first one, wondering when those are going to pop through. I haven't seen them just yet, but... I think soon. I could smell some sort of sweet flower in the air um, this morning, and um, it reminded me that spring and summer are certainly, I think, here and coming. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to need, we're going to do a little gluing now. So we've got our card front layer. Do you see how in that dried, we've got, let me bring this closer. Oh, maybe that light will really help. 
Okay. Um, we've got these light splotches where the color lifted. So that's the effect when we splotch that paper with that aqua painter. How do you like that effect? Isn't it pretty cool? It just adds a little dimension, a little extra something to the card. Okay, now we are going to start assembling our card. Um, I like to glue down my layers before I do um, embossing and, and gluing and whatnot. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that first. Grab my stamp and seal. I saw a Robin on here. Can you hear those angels singing? All the way over in Holcomb. Oh my goodness, I love using stamp and seal. It's so smooth and wonderful and amazing and I just love it. All right. So I'm going to glue this down. You know what's really funny? The brush I used for my Coastal Cabana that I grabbed, it's the same one I used last week for my Gilded Leafing. <laughs> I didn't realize I did that. And there are like speckles of gold on here left behind. It looks pretty cool. Okay, so you can see how that tone on tone changes when you've added the blending to your card front layer. Carol says her grandson picked her dandelions. Oh, Sue, your grandson already picked a bouquet of dandelions. You know, kids are great for that, bringing in those dandelions. And then you always have a nice, uh, pretty scent and pretty flowers. All right, I am going to use my liquid glue to glue these down because we've got some pretty detailed parts. And so I just kind of find we're going to glue this onto our card front. And the liquid glue works great. Fine tip glue pen also works great for this. Although I find the liquid glue um, dries a little bit faster. And so I just find kind of the um, bigger pieces that I can put my glue on. Oh, we have some people who have made dandelion jelly. I do hear that dandelion greens are absolutely wonderfully healthy. Um, and I know my mom has made, uh, my aunt, I think, has made dandelion wine, and my mom makes wine, and so she was going to venture into dandelion wine, but I have never heard of dandelion jelly. I'm really curious what it tastes like. I'm imagining it's sweet, like most other jellies. Do you eat it on toast, or is there a special way that you eat dandelion jelly? All right, I hear, Robin could hear the angel singing. Bernetta, have you had dandelion wine? Okay, so we're also gluing this other detailed one down. It's stuck to my finger a little bit. I love this silicone craft sheet for when I have to glue these intricate dies down. That way I'm not getting glue everywhere. So there we go. And now with our bigger dandelion, we are going to, oh my gosh, I'm running low on dimensionals. I have more. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna pop this one up on dimensional, just the flower part. <clears throat> and kind of down the flower a little bit. I'll just put some glue on there so that we can stick it to our card base. And I'm going to bring this one in right here, like so. And now we're going to grab our snips and we're just going to cut the ends of the stems as if they were a bouquet. Thanks, Kay. 
it's sweet. You eat it on toast. So interesting. I'll have to try that sometime. Okay, so here's our card so far. Sweet and simple, don't you think? But we've got a lot of interest and fun and whimsy with this um, splatters going on there. I love it. Okay, now I should have mounted my stamps, but this is how it goes in our craft room sometimes, right? Okay, I have got this tag and I'm looking for, here it is. Okay, we're gonna stamp our sentiment on here. And I really love this one that says, I love the font in this, by the way. Oh my gosh, you guys, I gotta tell you, Stampin' Up has been killing it with beautiful fonts lately. Um, I like this one that says made with love for a true friend. That sentiment is super, super generic and it could be used for a birthday card, a thank you card, all sorts of things. Um, so that's the one I'm going to use. Mount this here. Have my Coastal Cabana ink. Oh, thank you, Bunny. I'm hearing people already say they are loving the cards. Thank you so much. I think that those die cut pieces are just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to practice here before I stamp. Sometimes I like to practice so I know if I should need to watch for blobs of ink or anything like that. Okay. There we go, we've got our sentiment on there. Simple, we're not gonna do much more to that. But I do, you know me, I can't have a card without ribbon, you guys. So I've got my linen thread here, a nice neutral color to go with our Coastal Cabana and a vanilla. I'm just gonna cut a piece of this off. And we are going to tie this in a bow. So I just make a loop. I tie it around and I pull it through. And I try really, really hard not to twist my linen thread. And I usually fail. But that's what I'm going for, a non-twisted bow. <laughs> Way easier said than done, folks. All right. What I like about the linen thread is this is kind of stiff, so you can play it, uh, play around with it. You can kind of curl the ends of it. And what we're going to be doing is tucking it behind. Yeah, we're going to tuck it behind our sentiment like this. So... I am lining it up just to make sure that those loops will show through. So we'll put this here and our sentiment will go here. So I am going to use my glue dot. Now I want this to look like the bow is tying together my stems, but these are already kind of clumped. So I'm going to set it off to the side a little bit so that we don't get it too raised up since it's going behind our sentiment. So we wanna be careful to be um, paying attention to our layers. Marsha asks, is this in the new catalog? Yes, it's, in, it's not in the new big catalog, it's in our, January to June mini catalog. Good question. <clears throat> All right, and now I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. So I need to make sure I get one up in this corner. Those are all the things I'm thinking about and I'm gonna use the edges. Yeah, I can't believe it. I know you guys are shocked to see me use the edges of dimensionals here. Can you believe I've used all these edges already? I feel like I'm doing really good in that regard. 
it's kind of like when you're on a diet and you like brag how you've eaten really well and everything's going good. I feel like I've been doing really good at trying to use the edges of my dimensionals. I'm super proud of my progress and that I don't wait till the end. I know I see Robin saying, wow, and I know it's because she's shocked that those edges have been used the whole way along. And I'm a little shocked myself. Okay, so we are going to layer this down and then trim the edges of our linen thread here of our bow. <laughs> Kay is proud of me. Sue is proud of me. <sighs> I feel like I've turned over a new leaf. How about some bling? What do we think? What will go good? Oh, I really like the idea of the black, but as I'm in here, I feel like these opal rounds would really pop. So I don't know. I've got these extras that I got at a retreat I went to. So I'm going to use some of these, I think. So let's do here. Uh, yeah. Let's do here. And here. And I like to go with the flow of the card. I feel like maybe right here. So that was a pretty easy card and we're done. So here's how I like to start getting my creativity flowing. And sure enough, as I was playing around with this, I had another idea already that led me into my second card. So what do you think? I see so many people saying they love the card. Yes, the water spots really add something to it. And those opal rounds really complement it really wonderfully. Plus the opal rounds seem like they have a little bit of sparkly coastal cabana something or other in there. So um, that's, oh, you know what? We didn't stamp the inside. How could I forget to stamp the inside? So we gotta quick do that. We have to stamp the inside. I'm just going to grab these sweet little uh, dandelion thingamajobbers that blow in the wind. I don't know. What are those called? Those fuzzies? And I'll stamp off to soften. I think I will. like that in the corner. Okay, now we got to put the inside in. I said we were done. I was a little premature about that. Yes, good. I'm so glad to hear Vicki. It is really simple, but I think it adds a really, really um, amazing punch of wow to the card to do a little bit of blending and do that spritzing. The bigger splotches, by the way, were from the Aqua Painter. And there are some smaller ones, it's probably really hard to see, those came from my spritzer. So there's our inside, simple, good to go. There we have it. All right, let me do a little bit of cleanup here. Get some of my extra stuff out of the way so that we are ready for our second card. Seeds, yes, Carol, they're seeds, you're right. The fuzzy things that I don't know the name of is their seeds. Oh my gosh, I my husband always teases me because I can't think of the names of things sometimes, which is funny because his mom is the same way. 
Um, and he always teases me because I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Well, I know what I'm talking about, but I can't describe it. I can't think of the word for it. And uh, I'm so glad I have my stamping friends here to help me with my vocabulary because I really don't know. <sighs> All right. We are done with our tasteful labels dies. How much do you guys love these dies, by the way? Super, super glad that these are carrying over into the new catalog because I use them a lot. They're like a go-to die for me. If you don't have a set, you should pick yourself up a set of these dies. They are amazing. And some of them are like stitched and some have this like beveled edge that kind of embosses onto your layer. One of my very favorite die sets. And I have a lot of them. Okay. So let's move this out of the way. For our next card, I'm going to use a color I haven't used in a while. How about a little Blackberry Bliss? Oh my goodness, this is my go-to color for so, 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 so many projects. And um, I haven't used it in a while, so I decided to show it some love tonight. Cutting my card base. So we are just cutting our card stock in half. We're going to use one for our card base and one we're going to do some die cutting. And I think we should do our die cutting and get that out of the way right away. Now, I was absolutely inspired after using the fun dandelion dies to see what else I could do with them. Remember, this is how I start off and get my creativity flowing. So once I made one card with these, I had to play around and make more. So we're going to cut out our detailed dies again. And I know I'm a, I have so many cards in me. I actually have an idea for these these little dandelion um, leaves. These look like rustic pine trees to me. And so I'm gonna try to do something with those one of these days. All right. So I'm cutting out some Blackberry Bliss flowers. Ooh, I do not want to lose these, so let me very carefully. I don't want to rip. Any of these out. There we go. And then I've got my other dandelion here. And just like we did before, I'm going to cut one more of these detailed ones out. Now you may notice I like to flip my plates back and forth so that they don't work too much. That's a little tip for those of you with your stamp and cut and emboss machines. Flip your plates around so that they don't bend and warp. The other tip, I'm still using my old magnetic base plate from when I had my Big Shot. And so if you still have that, you can still use it. I'm sorry you can't buy it anymore from Stampin' Up, but um, if you have it in your collection, don't throw it away because you can still use it. It still fits into your stamp, cut, and emboss machine. <clears throat> All right, so we've got three dandelion flowers die cut here. We'll be using these. Now, I wanted to a little go to, so let me fold our card base here. Burnish that edge. I love the bone folder for a nice crisp fold. When I was thinking about my layers, I decided to pop open 
my memories, dandy garden memories and more card pack. Um, I have a little confession to make. This January to June catalog is the first time I bought one of these memories and more card packs. And um, creating with these is so stinking easy. We're going to use these two patterns, but I never bought them before because I always thought they were for scrapbooking. And I'm thinking, what can I do with these? Um, like, see how this has a saying, real life, and this one says, this is our happy place. But there are a lot of patterns here that you can use for cards. And some layers are already cut. There are some fun stickers in here. Um, like, together is my favorite place to be. Super cute. But like this stripe, this striping is totally in right now. And you can totally cover this up and still have a card layer that uses those um, colors. I see Kathy says she gets them every time. You know what, Kathy, I am with you. I am buying these every single time. In fact, I have a, a Memories and More card pack from my pre-order from the catalog. Um, where did I put it? And by the way, they store really, really nicely in a, a stamp case. So like once you open them up and layer the small ones, this one is from the new catalog. I haven't opened it yet. It's uh, the hand penned Memories and More card pack. Absolutely gorgeous. Super excited to show this off to you. In fact, it's going to be included in my first class. No, my second class from the uh, new catalog coming out. Yes, they are super, super affordable. And you get all these designs. Like I've made so many cards with these and it looks like I haven't even made a dent <clears throat> in these. Um, here's some more stickers, by the way, like some strips and, oh my gosh, awesome. I think these were only 10 bucks. So I absolutely love the Memories and More card packs. I will use them every single time I will keep buying them. <clears throat> so they make card and the, the, the colors already coordinate with each other. It's just perfect. All right, so this piece is already four inches wide. So I'm just gonna cut it down to five and a quarter. So I have an even border all the way around. Hi, Kathy, thanks for joining. I see some new people popping on here. Just a reminder to like, comment, and share for a chance at a prize at my live next week. Um, and I save these strips, by the way, too, because you can totally use them just like designer series paper. And a lot of these are already cut to a really good size that you can use. Um, okay, so for this, I'm going to be layering this onto my Blackberry Bliss. Don't these colors just pop? Oh my gosh, aren't they amazing? That pattern is a little busy. I can see my camera isn't quite sure where to focus, but you get the point. And then we're gonna layer this right on top. So we'll do some gluing right away because we're also going to be wrapping some ribbon around. Super excited, love my ribbon. So this side that says, this is our happy place, I'm using the other pattern. No big deal, just gonna glue it down. Hi, Jay, how are you? You know, Jay, I have been thinking about you because we are getting ready to head up to our land um, and get ready for the summer, get our dock in and do a little bit of work on the land and we are not too far from you. So I'm super excited to get up there. And I think you had, I had asked you about a particular supper club or a restaurant that you guys like to go to and I'm really excited to try it. So I was thinking of you the other day. <clears throat> if your ears were ringing, that was probably me. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do something a little bit different with these flowers. So um, obviously, remember we cut them out. Here's our top side, but we're gonna flip this one over on our card front. And so here we go with our liquid glue. Just very lightly on some of the larger surfaces. I don't need a lot of glue. This liquid glue goes a long way. All right, and so what I'm gonna do now is come in here and I am going to glue this down. onto our card front. Just like that, super simple. And I'm gonna do the same with our other. So this same idea and same layout is gonna make two totally different cards. Same basic shapes, but they're going to look, oh my goodness, so different from each other. You know, this one, I'm going to tuck down here. So I'm uh, making the heights a little bit variable here on our second card. And then just like our last one, I'm almost out of dimensionals. I'm going to just put a little glue down here. I'm guessing where this stem is going to land. I hope that's the right place. Yes, Kay, you can totally do um, Winkastella on the die cuts as well. Okay, and so I'm going to put this here. Just kind of place that flower just like so. Okay, so we've got our pretty bouquet and grab our snips again and just trim off the ends like a bouquet. That is how simple that is. Oops. It's getting stuck under my desktop layer. <clears throat> okay. Now I've got my linen thread here and I am going to wrap this around twice and tie it in a bow. So wrap. Now I'm always careful and paying attention to the, if I want my bow tied on the top layer of ribbon, then I make sure when I turn this other corner to bring the thread across the top. And if I'm on the bottom, then I do the opposite. So just a little tip for you when wrapping that thread around too. Helen has these dies on her Mother's Day list. Absolutely, they are wonderful and perfect for that time of year too. All right. So I am going to tie this in a bow. And again, I'm going to make it look like it is tying our stems together. And when I have a thin piece of thread or um, like baker's twine or something like that, remember, I always tie it in that first because Don doesn't want me calling him up here to hold his finger down on my knots. I mean, I always say he loves me, but he's not that kind of husband. He's got other stuff to do. <laughs> and I know my dogs aren't going to be able to hold it down for me, so he'd be the only other one. Okay, now once this is tied down, uh, of course it twisted, so I'm trying like heck to adjust these ends.
like so. I don't quite need as big of a loop. All right. So we've got our bow. Okay, and now we are going to grab, I'm not gonna trim the ends just yet in case I have to retie them. Out of the rest of our Blackberry Bliss, I'm gonna grab my tailored tag punch. And we're going to do some heat embossing. I wanna bring out that white, so. Um, what I did, I'm not going to heat emboss right now because it's loud, um, but what you do is, uh, for those of you new to heat embossing, you'll use your Versamark ink, and I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says, wishing you all the best. Okay, you are gonna stamp this in your Versamark. And then we've got our white heat embossing powder. I keep all my powder in the same container. And then I just keep reusing it. So we're just going to pour this heat embossing powder over. And then I tap off the excess. Okay. everything just right in here. Close it up and we're ready to go for next time. All right, and now we're just going to get out our heat tool. Our heat tool here. And we turn it on and let it warm up a bit. And then we heat set it. Okay. Now, I won't make you wait for me to heat set it. It really doesn't take too long, but it's a little bit loud for the video. So I've got one already made up. I don't think you're going to be able to see the difference, but this one here is, let's see if I can move my light. It's kind of grainy. This is the pre one. And then this next one here, it's solid and it looks kind of liquidy and it's it's raised up. So we've got our sentiment heat embossed. And what we're going to do is pop this up on dimensionals, just like so, over the top of our, I'm going to See, this is why I didn't want to trim this off yet. Over the top of our little bow. Just like that. So let me grab a couple of these. I'll just grab a little edge piece now. I'm bound and determined to use these edges. Bernetta loves the look of embossing. You know, it really makes your card pop, especially when you're doing a white embossing powder on a darker card stock. I absolutely love how that looks. Okay, so I am going to Stick this layer on here. And I did not put um, a dimensional here on the end because that is kind of popped over our bow. And then we just trim the ends and look how nice that looks. And then we will
pop up this layer as well. A lot of times when I wrap um, like a, a thread around or a ribbon, I like to pop up the layer that it's wrapped around. One more sheet of dimensionals, hit the vest. I love these things. Hi, Rachel. Better late than never. You're just about to catch our, our completed card. And I have white embossing powder everywhere. All right. So we are going to stick this layer down. Just like so. So there we have our card front. Now we should stamp on the inside. So I'm going to grab our dandelions here. And I'm going to bring some of these colors from the front to the inside. So I'm looking for my mossy meadow. Don't these colors really pop together? Oh my gosh, they are amazing. All right, so I'm gonna stamp off and just lighten the tone of that a little bit and bring it in right on the edge, just like that. And I am even gonna grab an envelope here. And we are going to coordinate our envelope with this card, too. So let's stamp our dandelions in the corner of our envelope. And now we've got a coordinating envelope when we send it out. <clears throat> Okay, just need to grab my mat so we can glue this on the inside. Just like so. Yes, Jackie says, great idea to stamp the inside in the envelope. I don't want the party to end on the outside of the card. I love to stamp, so I'm going to stamp every surface I can. So there we have an inside and our coordinating envelope that we can send out with it. Now we definitely could do some bling here. What do we say? I kind of like these gold metallic pearls. So let's just grab a couple of those. One here. And I'll do one down here. And one here. So there we have it. There is our second card of the night. Our last card. Um, and I gotta find my first card. And our first card. What do you think? Do you love them? So we used our same basic elements to make two totally different cards, different colors, and your creativity is now totally flowing. 
If you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. I hope that I've inspired your creativity tonight. Your support of my small business totally helps me to keep bringing these uh, inspiring projects to you. If you need to place an order, you can do so on my website. The address is right up here at the top, www.rosegrunewald.com. There is a link there for shop online. And my April 2021 host code is um, on the screen here as well. If your order is under $150, um, I would appreciate if you use that code. That is what helps me to bring you the gifts that I give away um, during my live events. If your order is over $150, skip the code because you will get some rewards directly from Stampin' Up! And I want you to get those rewards. But in all honesty, if your order is over $150, we should chat because you should be getting a discount on your products and you should be getting to see and order stuff from the big catalog early the way that I do. And so we should talk about how to do that. <clears throat> now, remember, I am live every single Monday. I will be here next Monday, same time, same place, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for another Make It Monday Live. Not sure what I'm going to do next Monday, but I'm sure it'll be fabulous <laughs> because uh, usually I come up with something that you all seem to love. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you again to stamp with you soon. All right, bye everyone. Have a good night.